wasn't that long ago that I used to really love Christmas shopping. I would love to go out and buy cozy sweaters and, and mittens and hats and all kinds of things for my kids and, and family members and friends. And I loved buying little novelty gifts and all kinds of stuff like that. And for some reason, I don't feel the same way about it. I find that the older I get, maybe just like the more stuff I have, <laughs> the less I want to buy more stuff for other people because I'm trying to get rid of so much of the stuff that I have in my house already. I don't know, but I never get tired of giving people things that I made and I never actually know if they really want those things. But I've decided to make more gifts than I buy from now on and if I feel like maybe they won't like it but at the same time chances are that somebody might appreciate a tea that I blended for them more than some cheesy like novelty mini drum kit I don't know I'm just making stuff up years ago my mom gave me these Christmas ornaments. They're just purple balls. She gave me a huge bag of these giant purple um, ornaments. I don't remember what they're called in English. I think because I hear it in French more <laughs> than English, but um, we'll do no one. Anyway, just balls. They're balls. They're ornaments and they're just plain round ornaments and they're starting to look pretty shabby a lot of them not all of them some of them are still cute but um i don't have the heart to throw them out uh, and buy new ones like i said i'm kind of on a don't buy stuff kick so instead i'm just um decorating them i'm just painting them and doing a bit of collaging i'm obsessed with collaging and <laughs> i'm not good at it at all i have so many collages and I'm terrible at it, but I still love doing it. So these little ornaments um, are getting collaged, I guess. <laughs> and, then, and then when that looks terrible, uh, I guess they can go in the garbage or I can re-collage them. My mom gave me this box of decoupage, like bits of pretty paper and gold shiny stuff and little stickers, stick on flowers and stuff. And I got really excited and started sticking them all over the um, balls, the Christmas ornaments. And I was really pleased with myself. And then afterwards I was like looking at it thinking like, who would, <laughs> like, I don't even want this on my tree. What am I doing? I just found myself so clever. Uh, while I was doing it, but then afterwards I looked at it and I was like, yeah, this is a, this is terrible. But I was so pleased with myself that I put it on the tree anyway. So my girlfriend has to look at that every single day. I stuck it right in the middle of the tree too. Anyway, I'm still doing them. I'm making them, I'm working on them right now. And uh, who knows, maybe some of them will be really cool. I hope so, because I'm showing them to you. <laughs>
I really am in the spirit of the holidays this year, which is very cool. And I haven't felt it this strongly in a few years, which is strange because my two of my daughters are not even in the province this year. One of them's not even in the country. And I'm not hosting a family Christmas dinner this year, which is very, very strange. <laughs> but we're going to my uh, son-in-law's family place for dinner, which is really fun and I'm very excited for that, but it still just feels strange to not have my girls here and not have the whole affair at my house. And at the same time, I think because I'm recovering from this broken ankle business and I'm actually home, while I'm not 100% mobile and I'm not 100% myself physically yet, I still have more time than I ever usually do because usually by now I'm frantic running around trying to get things done while I'm also working full time. So it's fun kind of, <laughs> except for I can't do all the things I want to do, but I'm still able to do more than I usually am able to do. I find usually around the holidays, it's so crazy and I'm so busy that I have all these grand ideas and then they just don't happen. Like I'm gonna do so much of the cooking in advance and so much of the baking in advance. I'm gonna hand make ornaments and I don't know, it just like almost never happens. I, I schedule it in like months ahead of time, which days I'm gonna start which projects and work on them. And this year I was gonna make Christmas placemats. Never happened. And I'm not even busy. So imagine when I'm working full time. There's still time, I guess, but no one's coming over for Christmas this year. Maybe that's why I lost my, my motivation. One of the things I did get around to doing though, although I did it two weeks too late to give it to the person that I wanted to give it to, was to make a wreath out of medicinal herbs that are very aromatic, like rosemary and eucalyptus and thyme and at first when I made it it wasn't super lush but I added some more over the days that followed as the herbs started to dry which you don't have to do it smells really good even when it's dry but I added some lavender and also some calendula and more rosemary and thyme and now it's very full and it smells so good and I hung it in the bathroom so it smells extra good when you shower and it's all hot and steamy. We went to an antique store because I was looking for pieces of old newspapers or magazines that I could cut up and use to decorate those old um, Christmas decorations that I told you about. And we found some really cool ones from the late 1800s and the early 1900s but they're all intact and I felt very guilty buying them just to cut them up. But the store owner assured me that she had mountains and mountains, hundreds of them, and that I should take them home and, and cut them up all I wanted, especially because I was gonna repurpose them and make beautiful Christmas decorations out of them, which is what I had intended to do. And I also what I thought I was doing while I was doing it but um, I actually don't even know if I'm gonna show them to you because I'm pretty embarrassed <laughs> about how they turned out. I don't know why when I was doing them, I just thought they were so gorgeous and I was really praising myself and telling myself how, how creatively brilliant I was. And then <laughs> afterwards I was just looking at them thinking that I was just crazy. I don't know if any of you have ever done that before. Creativity is a beautiful thing that way, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they look like at the end, right? It matters how you feel when you're doing it. Um, <laughs> I think that's the important part. Anyway, I got distracted a lot looking at all the interesting articles and ads in the newspapers. Some of them were just fascinating. Some were offensive and disturbing, but there were some really interesting ones too. And now I have to come up with a project of how to use up all the extra pages that I didn't use for my ornaments. If any of you have any suggestions, I'm open, I'm wide open. Can't promise that it'll be beautiful, <laughs> but I'll promise you that I'll have fun doing it. Maybe one of my projects can just be 
re-collaging over the ugly old collaging that I did the year before and just trying to improve it. Every year I'll, I'll put more ornaments, more, I mean, more decoration on the, I'll collage on top of the collages is what I'm trying to say. And then eventually the bobbles will be absolutely massive because I'll have layers and layers and layers and layers. is really fun to make not just because it's very tasty but also because it makes a perfect gift to give to people you can make it days in advance it keeps really well it's basically for the for the batter or the dough it's like a cookie dough just a bit more crumbly I guess you still start with butter and sugar creaming that together and I used some egg replacer also and some vanilla and hopefully you will remember to let your butter sit out at room temperature and get soft so it's easier to cream. I did not do that, so <laughs> I was struggling quite a bit. But it's not the end of the world. Biscotti's, it's pretty rustic. You're not looking for a super velvety, smooth consistency anyway. Or at least that's, that's what I tell myself to comfort myself. Anyways. And you add some some flour and some baking powder and a bit of salt and once that is really well combined you can get to the good stuff so I divided mine in half my dough because I wanted to make two different kinds I made an orange almond biscotti by grating some orange zest and using some slivered almonds And when I was combining the orange zest and the almonds into the dough, I just had to be careful because slivered almonds are pretty fragile, so I didn't want it to just turn into like an almond crumble or an almond meal. So I combined that as gently as I could to try and keep as many of the almonds intact as possible. the other half 
of the dough, I used roughly chopped pistachios and some dried cranberries that I had soaked for about 20 minutes beforehand and drained before I added it to the dough. I didn't have to be as careful with that one. Although I didn't want to squish the cranberries and, and get everything all pink, the pistachios are quite um, durable. Then I put my dough out onto a lightly floured surface and created two rectangular logs. I didn't work the dough too much and I used my hands. I imagine you could probably use a, a roller, I don't know. I haven't tried that before. Once I had two equal sized long rectangular logs, I used an egg replacer wash and brushed that on the tops. And then I sprinkled a bit of granulated sugar on top. And on the orange almond biscotti, I sprinkled generously a bunch more of the slivered almonds. The recipe is on sweetvegan.net as always, so you can go and get the detailed um, instructions there as well. But halfway through the bake, you're going to take it out and actually let it cool so that you can slice it. And then you're going to put your sliced pieces of biscotti back on the cookie sheet that you were baking it on and you're going to pop it back in the oven for the second half of the bake. Then they should be just golden brown on the outside once they're done and they're not they're not soft. I don't if you haven't had biscotti before, it's a crunchy biscotti cookie and they're perfect for dipping in hot cocoa or in coffee and they're perfect during the holidays as well but I mean you can eat them all year round thank you so much for watching this video it means so very much to me I really really appreciate it and I appreciate you taking the time to be here I hope you're having a really cozy beginning of the winter and holiday season if you haven't already subscribed, I really hope that you will consider doing that and click the little bell to enable notifications so that you know when new videos are coming out. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, I thank you so, so very much. I really, really appreciate that you believe in the work that I'm doing. And I thank you for helping to make this channel possible. See you soon and take really good care of yourselves. Bye.